Greetings, dear ones, I am Kryon of Magnetic Service. This is the fourth channel of the month. The subject is change. We have gone through several things regarding change, not all of them, attributes, you might say, that are now starting to happen on this planet. We're not going to tell you anything that hasn't already occurred to some way or in some element of discovery. The change mostly is consciousness. And we have given you some examples that the change that is here is not a surprise, that is actually expected and coordinates with the precession of the equinox and so many of the messages that have been given to you by the indigenous. So here you sit in an expected change time, and the first thing that happens is COVID. <laughs> you have to say, is it related? And we've given the answer now many times, indeed. Having stopped the earth, practically, it's like stopping the factory so that it can retool. It's like stopping other things so that you can see what was there. When you were running them, you couldn't see it all. So instead, you have things stopping so you can retool them, you can see what didn't work, and more. It gives a space, does it not? A space that no one expected in order to then come out of it differently. Dear ones, that's just the beginning. We've given you some things in the past and said, look for this and look for that, and it's coming, it's coming. There are some things coming that will surprise you, that are great, truly. And when I tell you about some of these things, you may say, how soon, Kryon, how soon? But every single one of these things that I'm going to give you now already exist. They already exist in some form or are being developed. And let me get this straight. Or they lay on humanity waiting for the aha experience. Kryon, what are you talking about? I will go back again and say to you, if you haven't heard it before, have you noticed that major inventions that have changed the culture of the planet always seem to happen all at once all over the globe, almost like they were delivered to consciousness all at once from somewhere else. Very seldom do you have just one individual with an idea that then changes the planet. It usually happens simultaneously, and the first individual to manifest it is the one who gets the credit. And some of the things that manifest themselves on the planet, if you look back, you would say, why did it take so long? How is this possible? One of them, if you've even analyzed it, electricity. How long has this been obvious to you in so many ways? Whether it's static when you move your feet on certain substances or, or whether it's lightning in the sky, why did it take until only a couple of hundred years ago or a little more for it really to be looked at and said, I wonder if this can be used. All at once, there were others on the planet who were working on this, dear ones. Flight is another one. The Chinese flying kites, they knew about wind for 3,000 years. Why weren't those gliding in the sky, using the updrafts and understanding the the purpose of wings and all of that, even without powered flight. Even today, you see those who leap off mountaintops without powered flight. Where was that? It should have been intuitive. You watch the birds, you fly kites. And it took till the Wright brothers. That wasn't that long ago. And they only beat the French by two weeks. Do you see what I'm saying? Inventions that change the earth culturally happen when it's time. 
You may disagree. You could say, oh, we can think of these things anytime we want. It's not true. Or they would have happened even sooner than they did. There are some things coming that are already here, dear ones, in certain ways. I want to tell you about them. Some have heard this before. I'll, I'll start with some things that are not high tech. Don't be surprised if the most advanced, I would say, discoveries you're going to make that are going to change this planet have nothing to do with artificial intelligence. They don't have anything to do with mass amounts of computing. None of that. It's back to basics, and it's going to be a discovery of how basic physics has always worked and some patterns of use that you just hadn't thought of yet. Brian, what are you talking about? Let me talk about the magnetic wheel. It might be two. It might even be three. There is a pattern where you can put the push-pull energy of small or large magnets together so that they will spin forever. You're aware, are you not, that magnets, very powerful, natural magnets, very powerful, they push and they pull. Put them together in an array where they will push and pull against each other, like some kind of a little engine, where they will always go, and they will go, and they will go forever. All you have to do is oil the bearing occasionally. Have you thought of that? If you can have a circle that spins on an axis, you can make electricity. I want you to think of something, and I'll just go right to it. Imagine no batteries. Crying, what are you talking about? You've got to have batteries. Wow. What if the battery was replaced by a tiny, miniature, spinning magnetic motor? For instance, in your phone. So there was no such thing as not being able to call because your battery is dead. Or any other device that you have right now that has a battery. Oh, how big can they get? Well, let's go to the next step up. Instead of a battery in the base or the back of a car, there is a little larger spinning electric engine, always supplying electricity to what we will now call supercapacitance. You'll always have enough to push on the accelerator and go for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of miles. And while you sleep, electricity is generated to the supercap. Crying, what in the world are you talking about? I'm talking about a world without batteries, but more than that, I'm talking about power for every single building that exists with an element on the roof, without a grid to fail, where no weather pattern will ever shut down a city again or cause those to die because they can't get electricity, because it's right outside in a little spinning motor that never stops and always goes and will power whatever they have. I want you to picture this. You might say, well, that's nice, but, but how does that help the planet? Picture this. What if every co continent on this planet could have as much electricity as they wanted to instantly and have it in their pockets? They could communicate. Computers would work. Phones would work. Internet would work no matter what. Can you imagine when everybody can talk to everybody? Cultures. Continents would start healing themselves, would start to be educated finally. That's where it's going. All from one undiscovered pattern. Putting those magnets together so they will push and pull in a way that they will spin forever and they can be miniaturized or they can be massive. They can power ships and cars and they go forever. And there is no resource taken of this planet and there is no, no nothing cast out imagine that is the power and the beauty of a source that you've never used not really magnetics there ones that particular pattern is here perhaps one of you listening has it here's my message to you don't be afraid 
to get it out there. There are those who will say, well, the power companies of the planet will, will buy it and, and pocket it because they want to sell what they've got. And the answer is, oh, no, they're in trouble. The grid is in trouble. Fossil fuels in trouble, if you haven't noticed. All of the things that you do to make electricity, including that which was supposed to be the holy grail, which is nuclear, doesn't work for you. And you know it doesn't work for you. Every one of them is dangerous, except magnetics. It's time, because those who are currently selling electricity using the old methods, all of them, even if they're using steam from the planet, all of them are anxious for this pattern to work, because that's what they will then manufacture and sell. Magnetic motors and engines, small and large, it's coming, it's coming. No more batteries. Can you see how that might revolutionize Everything. Educating the planet. Let me give you my favorite one. There are things that this body of yours does that has only to do with consciousness, only to do with consciousness, nothing else. In the last 20 years, there has been a revelation, a proof. Consciousness is energy. It can move things. This was not always thought to be the case. Consciousness was something esoteric, perhaps, and not really definable, but it didn't belong in physics. And now it does. If consciousness is energy, then you have rules of consciousness. There can be the physics of consciousness. When you start to figure that out and you understand what it is, you will have the reason for the placebo effect. Someone takes a sugar-coated pill, and they say it's going to cure you, and it does. What is the process? How is that possible? You take a homeopathy tincture. Chemistry that is so small you can't even measure it hardly. Innate sees it, and the body heals. How does that work? And the answer is the energy and the physics of consciousness combined with something called mirror neurons what the body sees and expects you see someone else eating a meal and you salivate that's consciousness over chemistry dear ones have you ever thought about that mirror neurons will play a large part in a system coming of healing where you inform the body that a healing is occurring and it believes it so completely, they may even call them the placebo laboratories. <laughs> it's coming. Figuring out what it is that consciousness has in energy that no pill could ever give you. I want you to ponder these changes because that is also in the works. Do you think when they discovered consciousness was energy, they just left that alone? No. They want to find out what it is in that magnificence of you that's multidimensional that can create self-healing over and over and they see it every day. And they say, we want to know so much more about natural healing. What is it that we can do to help the body heal itself? And dear ones, it's not going to take supercomputers or artificial intelligence it's going to take humanity at its best becoming simple and using what it's always had at its disposal. That is a real future. How long will it take up to you? How many of you believe it? For the belief itself, you might say, is a homeopathy. Because when you believe something, you can make it happen. Changes are coming to this planet, dear ones, and I've told you this. And we continue to tell you that the ones that we speak of will enhance humanity, and there'll come a time when the last thing you would ever want to do to each other is to kill one another. There is precedent for this in other places I have talked about. I've talked about this. I am crying in love with humanity. And so it is.